one of the questions that has been bombarding uh, my Facebook feed, and I'm sure yours as well, is uh, the question, where did uh, this most recent edition of the coronavirus come from? And uh, if you read four articles, you're going to get all sorts of different guessing that it came from Wuhan, that it came from the, the wet market there, that it came from a virology lab there in China. Um, I'm sure there are other ones that say it came from aliens or whatever. But ultimately, I don't think uh, those are the most helpful of questions. I, I think that we as Christians know exactly where the coronavirus came from. Um, I think we know where all viruses came from. And it came from the, the consequences of a choice that was made in a garden several thousand years ago when Adam and Eve... Um, man and his wife, who were made in God's image, chose to rebel against God and against his law. The consequences for their sin impacted everything. And so when we're, as Christians, as we're trying to look at the world with a Christian worldview, uh, what we need to see is that... Viruses that destroy life, viruses that attack um, people, people who are made in God's image, people who are made to, um, to govern the world and to bring it into subjection and to extend the rule and reign of God, and, it's, and it is attacking them, that, that is an effect of sin. We live in a fallen world, and things like destructive viruses are part of that world. It was not something that existed before Adam and Eve rebelled against God. Even one step further than that, um, we're, we're all seeing as a result of the coronavirus or of COVID-19, we're seeing, you know, we're, we're all really uh, trying to keep on top of, you know, the, the morbidity rates and the, the rate at which people have died and how many people have died and and we can almost, as, a, as Christians, look at that and forget that death itself is a direct result of the fall. That before Adam and Eve sinned and rebelled against God, there was no death. They, they didn't have death as a consequence for sin. And so what we're seeing as... Christians, what we're seeing played out in the world here is the consequence of sin. It's the consequence of the fall. It is life in a post-Genesis 3, pre-Revelation 21 world. We live in a fallen world. And that is very obvious to us right now. But if we're not thinking kind of in those theological categories, it can be it can be easy, it can be tempting to fall into a way of, of thinking that we as men, or as humanity, can fix this. There's only one person who can undo the effects of the fall. There's only one person who can ultimately be the undoer of these things, and his name is Jesus Christ. He rules and he reigns from heaven. And he will, he's in the process of, and will ultimately be successful in bringing all things into subjection under his feet. What this virus has done in, in the life of our nation, the life of this world, has really brought to the forefront a reality that we have, as fallen people, have tried to forget. And that is because we've rebelled against God, death is a certainty. With sin came death. And every person dies. I know we we don't like thinking about that. We don't like talking about that. Um, but that that is a consequence of sin. Now, as Christians, uh, that shouldn't be surprising to us. As Christians, we should have a a way of seeing the world that understands that we are from the dust. We returned to the dust, and our Savior has overcome the world. And he has conquered death itself. So we shouldn't fear death. 
I understand why the world fears death. Like death is that great destroyer. Death is the, the end of all the things that they have worked for. It, it, it is the greatest enemy that they face. But it, it is Christians who have a, a worldview that should be informed by the scriptures. I know it sounds maybe a little odd. We shouldn't fear death. I'm not saying be foolish with your life. I'm not saying be cavalier in the way that you live. God has told us and commanded us in his word to be wise people who are um, careful and not taking, you know, stupid risks. But at the end of the day, I'm very concerned when I see Christians fearing death like the world fears death. A Christian worldview says that our Savior has overcome death. That even when we die, we go to be with him. And even then, death has not the last word, but God will call forth our bodies even from the grave in the resurrection of the dead. And we will go to be to him that he is crushing sin and death and the grave. So we shouldn't fear death. I get why the world does, but I don't get why Christians do. Ultimately, what we're seeing is the effects of the fall, and only Jesus can undo the effects of the fall.